episode one of the Lincoln Institute podcast. This is the very first thing. Very cool. Yeah. Very exciting. You just imagine a uh, year ago, we were just us two, two man band and uh, <laughs> trying to figure out what the heck the Institute was, trying to figure out nailing down the mission to now, what, 24 universities, over 2000 students researched and helped and now we're now we're here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, a big part of uh, I think our journey was just getting out here to California um, mm -hmm. and doing the exact opposite of what really a lot of other people are doing. And I think that some people would say that we're a little bit insane in the things <laughs> that we believe in. But um, I'm glad that we're here and I'm glad that we've been on this journey together and kind of like what you said uh Last year was basically just you and me uh, building a plane while we were trying to fly it and get it <laughs> off the ground. Exactly. Over 100, 200,000 is just in the last year have left the state of California. And now we're moving here, creating a creating an organization. And yeah, now it's like complete opposite of what <laughs> yeah. most people are doing. What do you think would um, would be a, a good way to to share with people of like why we're here and what's going on because I can tell you that at least like a lot of our friends look at the stuff that we do and don't really truly understand. <laughs> yeah, they like don't really understand like what the heck these two guys are up to because I get that a lot. I get that quite a bit. Yeah, I guess that's what uh, this episode should be. I guess is kind of the who, what, why of the Lincoln Institute of California mm -hmm. and like how did this whole yeah. big mission and everything that we're doing kind of kind of came about. Um, you know, it's like we said, it, what, what is it now? A year and a half into it now? Almost? Sure. Yeah. A year and a so. half. And uh, I remember you and me being at ASU and, <laughs> you know, I think a, a big reason I can speak for myself at least, but like a big reason why, you know, I think we started this venture with each other is because, you know, I remember being 20 and 21 and I feel like I'm like a completely different person than being a 30 year old now. And I think that like, at least on my journey, and I'm sure that you can relate to this as well, but th this journey as being a man, you want to find your place in the community and you are starting to think of ways to kind of give back. I think that that's where you and me really clicked about here in California and, and a lot of the issues and problems that are happening in the state. And I think that you and me kind of were like, hey, you know, actually, if we put our heads together, we could actually make pretty big changes in the state. I, I think like that's what kind of in general drew us our, our friendship and kind of brought us in so many ways is that we both had like a very want to do something bigger. We had like really a vision of like wanting to excel, really hungry people. And in essence, that's I mean, the kind of what the Institute is and kind of the students and the, the people that we're looking for in so many ways is like, young people that want to do exceptional things. And then it's like, yeah, mm -hmm. the question of how do you transition and become an adult, become a yeah. man, a woman? Like, how do you find your way kind of in like the, the world in general, yeah. I guess, you know? And it's tough. You know this, I worked with uh, uh, kids in soccer for mm -hmm. a, a decade training at an elite level uh, for uh, soccer. And I just, you know, I see a lot of kids that are lost, you know, a lot of kids that they don't have certain values or principles. And it's like very easy for them to kind of just like go down a dark path and like go down that dark tunnel and, you yeah. know, they don't see a way out. I mean, I think that if you look at generation, our generation, Gen Z, I mean, we're millennials, Gen Z's next up and coming generation, <laughs> there's just so many I feel like more pitfalls have come up mm -hmm. and more distractions and more things that, I mean, social media in general just has taken so much and it can yeah. be such a, uh, it could be a good thing, but it can also like just take away. And you, you do see somewhat of a, some of these kids that we're meeting and seeing, you know, some of them seem hopeless at times. Uh, we, I remember we talked about this not too long ago, but the you know technology and how prevalent it's been in just like the last like 30 years i felt like your and my generation was really like that last generation where you like go and for like a sleepover or go like ride bikes and like go and actually connect with your friends and 
I feel that the uh, a few years down the road, there's a lot of kids that, you know, you had the Xbox Live mm-hmm. and you had like all these other ways of connecting with your with your friends. And we've probably spent the last 30 years or so kind of getting this big wave of technology. And I believe that the, the next 30 years is going to be us now adapting with it yeah. because we're seeing all these problems right now. Mm-hmm. Seriously, we are. Yeah. We're seeing a lot of the problems r- it, right now it, coming from technology. Oh, yeah. And when we were speaking, so we had an event not even that long ago at Western University. And I, I remember I was, I was telling the kids, there's like, I should say kids, just students. Uh, I was telling the students, there's like, there's two options right now when it comes to social media technology. You can either like be a hermit and like go into your little you know, just dis- like completely disconnect from mm-hmm. the world yeah. and just go into your little hole. And s- some people can actually find happiness with that. You know, I mean, so I, I talked to some people that like never have social media, never yeah. been Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, any of that. And they're fine. They seem OK. But is that realistic? Like, can every person just be that disconnected? Mm-hmm. I don't think so. So the next thing that we have to understand is that more apps, more social media platforms are going to get created. Mm-hmm. And it's how do we manage that and how do we create tools and make learn about tools that will help us you know where we're not getting totally sucked in Mm -hmm. and it's and i think it's even beyond social media there's so many different things that are even becoming i mean politics suck people in you know technology any kind of technologies a lot of different things can and so how do we as an institute you know it's like kind of even the essence of who we are like how do we create things that are not sucking everyone in (laughs) yeah i I mean if possible you know, and I think that's a big reason why we really are leaning in super heavy into the Institute. And I, you know, I guess for like the people that don't really know what the Institute is, you, what's the vision? You know, yeah. wh- what is our, what is our vision? And I mean, you say it better than, than well, I do, but. My vision really is like, if you are doing something phenomenal in the state of California, if you are a hungry young individual that is just breaking walls down, just like running through walls, I should say, and just really wants to make a real impact on the state, maybe in the country. Like we want to know a little bit about you. Yeah. We want you to be a part of our organization. We we are going to be making a lot of fun, less like cool events mm-hmm. and just like different things where we can just bring in, you know, where it's attractive and we want to bring in business leaders and, you know, that we can interact with these young people that are really hungry and mm-hmm. really trying to make an impact. You know, totally. who can make an impact on our state? California is used to is kind of like what happens here permeates around the, the country. Yeah. For I mean, for for decades, at least. And I think the word that you used was uh, that it, this would be is like an incubator. Mm hmm for these kids to tap in to resources that they probably wouldn't be able to find without us. And we're helping and excel and push, you know, boundaries that they probably had in their minds that, you know, that they didn't think that they were going to be able to, to get through. And to kind of like add to what you're saying, I think that like through the events and through, uh, you know, connecting the students with business leaders, I think like the main purpose is we really want kids to find their own virtue. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The, and what does virtue mean? Virtue means you, on a daily basis, it's a daily practice of where you're being honest. You're being, you have courage. You're being brave. You're, tr- you're, you're, you're uh, being trustworthy. Yeah. Imagine if everybody was trying to find their virtue. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I remember I was hearing Jordan Peterson speak about, so I think uh, Pierce Morgan asked him a question about what would make the world a better place. And he said that the world is full of uh, narcissistic, uh, c- compassionate uh, narcissists. Mm-hmm. And I thought that was so funny because it's just like, we re- as you get older, you do understand that people have like their own agendas and you know, that they'll, they will, try to push themselves and other people out of the way. And it's like, what a, what a terrible world to live in. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? It's like, as long as like you're, you're an honest person and you're trying to do good things and you're trying to help your community. And I think that's the message that we're trying to, to, to at least instill here in California. Yeah. There's one thing to say, I'm a leader. There's one thing to say, hey, I'm gonna be a leader. I'm gonna do it. But what does that really mean? Like, what does it mean to be like an honorable, good person? Like, we really have to think about is, Who's going to be taking up the mantle of all these institutions? Who's going to be our next CEOs? Who are going to be our next politicians? Who and what do they stand for? 
you know? Yeah. And if we can, they stand for the same BS that for the past 40, 50, 40, 50 years that has run us down into the ground? Exactly. What do they stand for? And if we can create, you know, in my eyes, just a an institute, a incubator, like mm -hmm. like where we're getting young people that are getting these values and are learning these things, mm -hmm. like we could change society. We totally. could change the way all elements of California operates. No, to I, I totally agree. And I think that one of the, like the really cool things is that, you know, the way that we connect students with business leaders, I mean, we're connecting them to business leaders that speak the same way that you and me do. Yeah. You know, and that they, that they agree and they see mm -hmm. the world the, the same exact way. I don't know if that's like a, like a good thing seeing the, the world in the same way in all that sense, but I, you know, I will, will play devil's advocate and say that if, the, if you're thinking in the same way of just being an honest person and, and a good person and looking to do your best, and um, you know, that's a hard thing to refute. Yeah. And you, you can't really go wrong also. You know, yeah. you might not be the millionaire or whatever, but you'll still be a success. If you just live by certain values, you'll yeah. always be in a good place, no matter what I think. And I think that's a huge problem that we live in right now is how polarizing things are mm -hmm. and how people are, a lot of people are starting to be separated and the right is going more right and the left is going mm -hmm. more left. And then you have these young kids. And again, I bring it back to the point about being 20 years old. I had no idea what <laughs> I was doing when I was 20. I thought I did. Yeah. You know, my ego told, told me I knew everything and I was on the right track, but then you know, as a 30 year old now, you kind of like look back and like, oh, my God, <laughs> what type of person was I back then? Yeah. And so it's I think it's really special what uh, we're trying to do here. We have we have a really great team. Yeah. Um, and I think that, you know, after doing this for just a year, it it's pretty cool to see how people receive that message mm -hmm. and how they're interpreting it. Yeah, well, I guess that leads into my I guess how we, I guess the next part of what we should probably talk is. Uh, how, the how, you know, mm -hmm. we're talking about the why a lot of like the what and what we were trying to do, but I guess the the how, how are we, how do we plan on doing this? You know, I come from the world of student government. I was vice president at Arizona State, had a massive million dollar budget that, I mean, I could make. I remember I, mean, I used to go to your office and <laughs> sleep, sleep on the couch. And you I had a couch in my, my, my own office on college campus. Classes. Yeah. yeah, I had my own office. I thought it was awesome. Yeah, it yeah. was great. <laughs> and my own office, but I mean, I had a, what, almost two, over a little over a $2 million budget. I had Rand Paul come to Chorus campus. I bust everyone to the state capitol for lobbying. I actually don't reasons. think I've ever asked you this, but yeah. like when, since you had control of that budget, did you really like have a bunch of clarity on like what you were going to do? Or was it more like other the, people kind of like, hey, you have to do this or when when I was first elected, was there any like a, autonomy or no, when I was first elected, I had zero clue. I had to hire a staff about 12 people. And then I also had to review this budget and decide on certain things of allocation. Zero clue. Mm -hmm. If it wasn't for the advisor, which in some ways is a bad deal because the advisor is chosen by the university and the university is obviously going to want to push certain things yeah. that they want. So it's not really me. Repre so no, I didn't have a lot of advice. I had to learn a mm -hmm. lot on the way. And, you know, so that's why even for us, the Institute is like, we could be that person that one can help someone. We are going to be that person that's going to help, you know, these young leaders. One is recruit finding student government, but isn't like, yeah, helping them. Like that was such a huge responsibility. I don't even think people even realize how big or even how many with student government and student body presidents and what they do I mean, and their impact not at on all. people are usually shocked when you tell them how much money is involved in uh, student government. Hillary Clinton was student body president. Scott, former governor in Wisconsin, Scott Walker was student mm -hmm. government. Reagan, Ronald Reagan. Ronald Reagan. Reagan. College, yeah. These guys are going to be the future. And like we were talking, how mm -hmm. we started getting good values in them now. Yeah. So, I mean, like for sure, that's one of the hows of how we're, we're trying to change is that we, we do identify like premier student leaders on campus. And then we go and we basically create a blueprint to help them, you know, either manage the budget or be a more efficient leader on campus in their particular role. You know, and I think another really big aspect is just the mentoring yeah. side. Yeah, 100%. Coming from like the soccer world and, and coaching athletes to now working with more student leaders. And um, I, I really do think that through those experiences, like 
we shot something here in the office. I, you weren't here, but we shot something here in the office with the students and the students were nervous. They were like freaking out. Like they were like, I'm like, like, like literally one of the kids was like, I think it's the camera bullets. when they see the camera. Yeah. Yeah. But, the, but the, it's just like, even like something just simple like that. Mm -hmm. It's like, Hey, no, it's good. It's like, it's like, if you're afraid of this, go face first, Yeah. go face first into it. And you're probably going to stumble and you're going to, you know, and you're going to mess up, but guess what? You're alive. You're going to do, you're going to go do it again. And, yeah. and I would actually advocate that like, at a young age, whatever you're afraid of, go and attack it with right. your face first. And if we can open up new experiences like that, will be such a pivotal role, you know, I think mm -hmm. could have such a pivotal role in just opening those kind of things up for students and oh, like yeah. giving them experiences that, you know, they just never have have been through. Yeah. And I mean, the, the events too is a, a pretty huge deal. I can't tell you how many kids have come to me and just been like, when's the next event? And would love to, uh, you know, want to come. I want to mm. bring more students. And I mean, it's just like really cool to see because I mean, like you said, it was just you and me last year. <laughs> and now the team's like growing, the the vision's like really catching yeah. on with a lot of people here in California. And um, I mean, I couldn't be more proud. Yeah. Seriously, I couldn't what, be more proud of what we're doing. No, and what I really am liking now and what's kind of, when we started this last year, it was solely focused on a lot of the student government yeah. leadership deals but it was kind of like we had like that epiphany almost like a couple like maybe halfway through is like is we could be doing a lot more we could be going deeper we can be really impacting culture mm -hmm. and going to different levels i mean yeah. student government's great those are some of the top leaders and we we do a great job of doing it but how do we go to ones that are already wanting to do activist political activist movements how do we do against ones that want to fight for mental health yeah. How do we do it for young journalists? Mm -hmm. You know, the Institute in so many ways will be the, like we said, the incubator. And how do we even go even deeper and do student led programming that is really hitting beyond surface level? I think the biggest difference from, you know, last year versus this year is that there's actually a really big foundation built from last year. And it's just crazy to see the growth that's coming now from this foundation mm -hmm. um and just like to your point it's like uh, i i can't imagine in the next couple months what else we're going to be oh, man. that we're going to be adding i mean i mean even next couple months and five years i mean we're in southern california right now 24 universities wait you were, we were doing this today how many universities do, are in the state of California? Um, with the public, uh, with the for-profit or minus? With all of them. What was the final? It was with, minus the Minus the for-profit ones. Okay. Yeah. Uh, 307. 307. Yeah. So there's 307 universities. We're at 24 right now. Mm -hmm. So how do we get, you know, to that 307? I mean, in, five, in a couple of years, we'll be... 370 universities, yeah. wow. A good way to get out there is kind of just doing this sort of stuff, like you and me yeah. talking a little bit about, you know, obviously this is a first uh, podcast, but uh, hopefully more to come, but um, it's just by doing stuff like this, you know, creating content that's gonna be mm -hmm. engaging with young students uh, and just like the young generation in general, you know, getting it out there, getting our message out there. And I truly believe that this message that we have that it's totally going to resonate with a with a lot of students, and it doesn't matter like on the political spectrum. I just like feel that a lot of people just want to feel united. Yeah. You know, a lot of people really just 100%. like are so tired of oh, like yeah. fighting with each other. No, hundred percent. So, nutshell, Lincoln Institute. Mm -hmm. Basically, if I were to say it, is if you're doing anything great, phenomenal in the state of California, we want you to be a part of what we're doing. We want to create pathways for you to. Mm -hmm is either leadership, it's entrepreneurship, it's either in the mental health field, science field, whatever it is, we're gonna be the institute, the incubator that will help create the pathways and help recruit you into our network of, mm -hmm. 100%. Uh, of people. Yeah. And then in January is the, um, the summit? Yeah, is our massive summit. That'll be the big one. Potentially with? Yeah, with Glenn, Glenn Stearns. Stearns. Potentially Glenn awesome. Stearns, yeah, keep your fingers <laughs> crossed. Uh, last year, our very first summit, we did it at Palmer Lucky. So people that don't know, Palmer created Oculus Rift and the VR, headset. VR headset. It sold to Meta. He's like one of the youngest billionaires in the country. Um, and we had an amazing event. 
I don't know. We're going to have to figure out how to top that at uh, our next summit at Glenn Stearns' house. Uh, I, I, I think we are going to <laughs> be just fine. Yeah. <laughs> I think uh, what a, a, you know, just kind of like short kind of summary of everything is that, you know, last year we spent um, the majority of the year just creating this uh, fundraising. Pro, uh, fundraising, creating the program. Um, many sleepless nights, many uh, sacrifices, uh, many times sleeping on air mattresses or <laughs> on like pillows. And, you know, it, it, and I'm so proud of that. I'm so proud of our journey. And I'm like, I'm not afraid to say that to people, you know, mm -hmm. because uh, that's the stuff that a lot of people don't really talk about. And we ate, you know, we ate shit in our, in our, got it in our face and we took it and we mm -hmm. rolled with it. And now, um, you know, fast forward to where we are now, um, we built a good enough foundation that, you know, the second year looks like we are going to do maybe double or triple of what we did yeah. last year. And I, you know, I don't think that the numbers are the most important thing. I think it's more of the experiences that we had last year and meeting everybody and all the students and connecting with the business leaders and creating this um this ecosystem that you know that i hope that only really grows yeah but a 2022 2023 year of just ready to kick butt and just really get some really recruit some really great students so yeah and a, we're and in a, a good position and a big thank you to the people that believed in us and yeah. the people that had the same kind of crazy vision so they, like thank you to like the lincoln club thank you to seth thank you to yeah. Rick and, and the board and the people that they took really did took a chance on us. Yeah. We basically came to them with this crazy idea and they believed in it when I could tell you that a lot of people really didn't. I'm super grateful yeah. for that. That's how, that's how we should end this. <laughs> it, it being grateful and gratitude towards just the people that, you know, and it, it wasn't easy. Seriously, and, without know, them, it's impossible. Yeah, this impossible. wouldn't be here, so. <laughs> it's impossible. Yeah, and we just, so much more to come. Yeah. Podcast one and podcast one of a thousand, <laughs> maybe more, a thousand awesome. and more. <laughs> awesome. Cool. Yep. Sweet.